Another class of people that we're going to talk about now is widows in our character studies. And you know, started a character study, and we thought we were going to do one indo individual person, but we also found in character studies we can talk about a group of people at the same time. And here we're going to talk about widows. And we're going to look at Genesis 38, verse 14 first. Again, we're using the King James Bible that is the word of God beyond all. In verse 13, it was told Tamar, saying, Behold, thy father-in-law goeth up to Timnah to shear his sheep. She put, on, she put her widow's garments off from her and covered her with a veil and wrapped herself and sat in an open place. So, early... From the very beginning that we see in the Bible about widows, we see that there is a particular garment that is worn by the widows. And we, we march to verse number 19. And she arose and went away and laid by her veil from her and put on the garments of her widowhood. So they had... In the time of Genesis, before the law, there's no law yet, that a widow was recognized by what she wore. So, it could be easily identified who a widow was. Exodus, chapter 22. 22, 22. Under the law. 22, 22. Exodus, ye shall not afflict, trouble, distress, any widow or fatherless child. So, you could not cause in the Jewish law by Jehovah God, you could not distress you could not trouble a widow. You could not make her feel unease because you're going to steal her house, her property. You couldn't make her feel unease that she wouldn't be able to survive anymore. You got to realize when we're talking about widows, we're talking about people who's already grown in age, who have done their duty. Today, we stick them in a nursing home, in a convalescent care, and we forget them. And I forget if it's China or Japan. It's a law. You must take care of your parents. There should be a law like that in America. All the nonsense that goes on in the nursing home atmosphere, the uncaring. Let me say that. So... Going on to Leviticus, still in the law. Leviticus. Make sure 21, 10, I hope. Uh, 21, okay, 21, 10. We're talking about the high priest. And we're looking at the law of the high priest. And he is the priest of all the priests. He is the leader of of the, the means of Jehovah for the nation of Israel. And what we have in verse 14 for the high priest, verse 13, he shall take a wife in her virginity, a widow or a divorced woman or profane or high, these shall he not take, but he shall take a virgin of his own people to wife. So the high priest was forbidden by the Jewish law to take a widow to wife. He had to find a virgin. Now, this is not to say that a widow could not get married. We're talking about the high priest here. So no widow could ever look to the fact is, all right, here's the high priest. He'll marry me one day. He was forbidden to marry her. So I thought that was kind of interesting for the widow. Uh, 22. 
chapter 22, Leviticus 13, about the widow. But if a priest's daughter, okay, this is a priest, this is not the high priest, this is, you know, the common priest. If the priest's daughter be a widow, okay, or divorced, or have no children, and that's important, no children, and is returned unto her father's house as her youth, she shall eat of her father's meat, but she, but there shall no stranger eat there. So, looking at what we're talking about, the widow, a, a, a priest's daughter marries a man. The man dies. She becomes a widow. She's allowed to return to her father's house, a priest's house. And she's allowed to eat the meal of the priest. She's allowed. That's under the law. Numbers. Numbers. 31, I hope. I say my writing is terrible. And that's not it. Let me try 30, verse 9. Numbers 30, verse 9. Now, this is the laws of vows. It says, But every vow of a widow, and the first that is divorced, wherewith they bound their souls shall stand against her. And here the thing is, a female, if she lives in her father's house, she's a daughter, she's unmarried, lives in her father's house, or if she's married to a man, to a husband, and if she were to make a vow, her father hearing the vow or her husband hearing the vow can establish to make that vow void. But not a widow. And if a widow will say, I swear to God, there's nobody that could avoid her oath, her vow. She would have to stand to it. Now, what about if she goes back to her father's house? Every vow of a widow. She can go back to her father's house. Still, when she makes an oath, a vow to God, it will stand. Deuteronomy 16. Deuteronomy 16. 11. And thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God, thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant and the Levite that's in thy gates and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow which are among you in the place which the Lord thy God shall choose his the place is named there. That's Jerusalem. So what it is, when you're feasting, when you got the, the times of, the, of, of the, uh, the celebrations of Israel, you got the feast, get your widows, get everybody, go to Jerusalem, which would be the city, go to Jerusalem and celebrate before the Lord. Don't exclude your, 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 your strangers. Don't exclude your widows. Bring them. Your maids and your, and your men's servants. Bring them. Don't leave her behind. Don't leave her behind. Deuteronomy 24. Deuteronomy 24. 17. Thou shalt not pervert the judgment of a stranger, nor the fathers, nor take a widow's Raiment to pledge. And the pledge is, is, is collateral. And there's that raiment again. There's that clothing. It's her mark. It's her identity.
You cannot say, all right, <clears throat> you need a loan, you need something like that, give me a widow's garment. The very fact is that that widow's garment is so important that it would even be thought of as collateral. And when you read, just, you know, okay, so what does a widow's garment ha raiment have to play? That's your clothing. And we saw it in the first uh, rule and order that appears in the Bible in Genesis. That was her identity. The garment. It's uh, 24. 19. When thou cuttest down thy harvest in the thy field, and hast forgot a sheep in the field, thou shalt not go and fetch it. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, for the widow, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in the work of thy hand. When thou bearest, when thou bearest the olive tree, thou shalt not go over the boughs again. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and the widow. When thou gatherest the grapes of thy vineyard, thou shalt not glean it afterwards. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. That's the book of Ruth right there. Ruth was a widow. Naomi was a widow. And what it is, is you don't go and pick all, every single crop in Israel. You leave some behind. If you left some behind, you don't go back. There was, Boaz ordered his men to leave some on purpose for Ruth to gather. It's because, you know what, That's, that could be their only meal. And they would have to work to get their meal. They would have to pick, they would have to uh, gather, they would have to do what needs to be done for their meal. That's what Ruth did. She gathered the wheat. She shifted out, and she brought home to Naomi. So, there was no open, all right, here it is, just put it in a shopping carriage. There it is on the plant, go get it. You got to climb that tree, go get it. You got to go in the fields, go get it. You don't go out in the fields, you don't go in the tree, you don't, you're not going to get it. But, the owners, like Boaz, don't go back and get it all. We got things today. We got technology. If you were to go on YouTube or, or their television program, and they'll, they'll show you, they'll go in and reap the entire harvest. Dead. Gone. Well, for the Jewish law, that's a no-no. Leave it for the widows. Because a widow back then they ain't going to go get a job like today. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. 13, I hope. Deuteronomy 28, maybe 3. Thirteen. I apologize. Twenty-eight. Oh, that one I won't be able to show you. Let me try one. Well, Thirteen it can't be. Seventeen, maybe. No. All right. Do you know me? Twenty-seven. Nineteen. Cursed be he, Deuteronomy 27, 19. Cursed be he that perverteth judgment. Oh, huh. that's, that's standard. You know, you allow somebody to get off because of their status, because of their their termination with the, the movie industry, the sports industry, or wealth, or uh, politician. But cursed be he to perverted the judgment of the stranger, 
We're not looking at that right now. The fatherless and the widow. And all the people shall say, Amen. So, don't misjudge the widow because she's a widow. Don't take advantage of her. Also, don't at all at all abuse her by false judgment where because she is a widow and you say well she's a widow so what we'll do is we'll, we'll We'll get, we'll give her, we'll rule her favor. What I'm trying to say, because she's a widow. That's just as wrong. You can't rule in the favor of people because of their race or color. That's wrong. You can't rule in favor of somebody because they're a widow. That's wrong. You got to have right, balanced judgment, and you can't rule against a race or color or widowhood that's wrong that's not balance it's not balance at all first kings first kings 17 9 God speaking to Elijah get thee to Zarephath which belongs in Zidon and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman to sustain thee. So he rose and went to Zareph. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in the vessel that I may drink. So the land is a famine. God tells Elijah, Here is this widow woman. She's going to take care of you. God calls this, this Gentile widow woman to take care of his prophet. And because she believes God, and because she believes God's prophet, and because Elijah believes God, that this woman does end up taking care of Elijah, they are taken care of during the times of the famine. And they have where the, where the oil doesn't waste. The oil doesn't go away. It sustains them that she can keep making cakes for her and Elijah and her son. Well, that's amazing. Because that widow woman listened to God and took care of his prophet because the prophet listened and obeyed God. Both of them had faith in God. God sustained them. Job. Job. Chapter 24. They drive away the ass of the fatherless and take the widow's ox for a pledge. All right, now we talked about her garment, but the widow, she has an ox. An ox is, is used for farming. It's your, it would be your tractor today. And later on, it could be for beef. <laughs> And what they have done is they have gone up to the widow and say, okay, we'll give you this. You give us your ox. And we're not talking about a good company of people in chapter 24, 1 and 2. They're mean and they're cruel. And what we saw in the law, taking the, the widow's pledge of her garments, Job is before the law. So we are running to the fact is, before the law, 
You were not to take the pledges of the widow. You were to, to sustain her. And we're going to see that later in the New Testament. But what we've seen is you are to, and God takes care of the widows. Now, yeah, every widow, you know, they die like anybody else, for the wage of the sin is death. They suffer like anybody else. But you, as a community, really were not allowed your widows to suffer. At all. And Job is before the law. Psalms. The book of Psalms. 68. 5. A father of the fatherless, that's God, and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. All right, so we've talked about the judgment of widows. We talked about you weren't to misjudge them. You were not to mistreat them. You were not to give them an unfair advantage of the law. God will judge the widows and their needs, their cares, and who they are. There is coming one day two final judgments, the judgment seat of Christ for Christians and the great white throne judgment for the lost. Widows will appear before God and God will judge them. Jesus Christ. I mean, we're all sinners. But you better be very careful when you're looking at widows in the Bible. You better be very careful because God does hold them on a regard of your treatment. And like I said, in Japan or China, they make it a law to take care of your parents. And not in America. Psalms 146. Psalms 146. Verse 9. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He re... He, yeah. My tongue. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. Relieveth the fatherless and the widow, but the way of the wicked he turns upside down. So, relief of widows is the Lord. And if you were to give them affliction, trouble, and distress. You are in complete opposite of what God says. You're not in good hands. Proverbs. Proverbs 15. I hope. I look at the writings like, oh no. <clears throat> the Lord will again Proverbs is under the law the Lord will destroy the house of the proud pride but he will establish the border of the widow so the widow has property and I'll bring it up today because I know this where I come from in Connecticut imminent domain God says, no, 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 no. God says, I'm not playing that game. Where you have any nation, any people, any authority that violates the widow, her property, her means. Again, 
You are at odds with God, Jehovah. Matthew. Okay, now we go into to the Gospels. Matthew. Matthew 23, 14. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, the religious hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses for a pretense and make long prayer, therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. So what they're doing is, what the thing is today, like the Catholic Church, you're a widow, your husband's dead. Well, if you give us money, we'll pray them out of purgatory. We'll make these long prayers for your for your family that has died, leaving you all alone. And God says for the religious people that do that to the widows, again, the widows are, are, are being taken advantage of. The widows are given to a point where they can't do. They're, they've been cheated. And God says to those religious hypocrites, to the Catholic Church, you're going to get a greater damnation. And I know, I know plenty of widows and all that, and coming out of the Catholic Church myself, you know what? They pray, they pay those priests for prayers. I had one time, I was in the Catholic Church, and I, I was young. I had no idea what was going on, but we had these candles, and some of them were burning, so I took a little wick, and I burned a candle. I, I mean, I didn't know what I was doing at that point, and somebody came to me and said, did you put your quarter in the box? I said, I don't have a quarter. He says, blow that out. I said, it's 25 cents. He goes, yeah, those candles are for people in purgatory. You put 25 cents in the box, and you light a candle, and the priest will remember to say a prayer. Nonsense. Once you're dead, you're dead. That's it. You can't pray for dead people. So here they're taking advantage of the widow. And we're in the, we're in the gospel age. We're in the time of Jesus Christ. Carried over from the, from the Old Testament. Mark. Gospel. Mark. 12. Mark 12. 42. And there came a certain poor widow. She threw in two mites, which makes a farthing. Verse 44. For they did cast in their abundance. They gave whatever they had left over. But she, out of her want, did cast in all that she had, even all her living, And God said, Jesus said, this poor will is cast in more. That widow who is poor had all her money willingly of her own pleasure gave all her money to the Lord. She didn't watch the television evangelist. She was not connived out by a preacher. She was not. She said, I'm going to give God to you. This is the last I have. I'm going to trust in you. I ain't listened to no preaching. Give all your money, you know. No. And Jesus acknowledges this widow over everybody else who put money in the collection plate. And so she had all her want, verse 44. She had needs. She had wants. Maybe food. She gave, now listen, I am not preaching to you. Give everything you have to God. Put it all on the collection plate. I ain't preaching that. I'm telling you what this woman did. And anybody who preaches, give all you have to the church, give all you have to the preacher. Uh, no, 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 no. Don't. But she did. 
And Jesus acknowledged this widow woman. Plain and simple. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, 37. She was a widow woman, this is Anna, about four score, four score and four years, 84 years old, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. Anna used their time of her widowhood to be at the temple and to hear the prayers and to pray for others. And it says in verse 36, she was Anna, prophetess, the daughter of Phanil, the tribe of Asher. She was great age and lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And she come in an instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord. Jehovah spake on him all the things of the redemption of Jerusalem. She got to see Jesus, the baby Jesus. She was so faithful <coughs> in praying. She was so faithful at the temple that when the baby Jesus is brought to, is it Simeon? Simeon. That she also, a widow, faithful, got to see baby Jesus. How many of us got to say, hey, you know, we, we, you know, they celebrate December 25th, it's the birthday of Jesus. How many of you out there got to see baby Jesus? I never got to see baby Jesus. Eight days old. Anna did. <clears throat> Anna was a widow woman. Anna was a woman that served the temple by prayers. She served God by praying night and day for others. I don't know what I can do. You can pray, can't you? <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, I'm in a nursing home. I can't do nothing. Can you pray? That's what Anna did. And look what God did. Chapter 4. <clears throat> Excuse me. Chapter 4, verse 25. But I tell you the truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias. When the heavens were shut up three years and six months, with great famine was throughout the land. But unto none of them was Elijah sent, save unto Sephartha, a city of Sinai, unto a woman that was a widow. Run that back to First Kings chapter 17. <coughs> Excuse me. That we've already read. Jesus brings up a history lesson about the widow woman that took her to Israel. Is that amazing? <coughs> Excuse me. It's something in my throat. That widow woman didn't know what was going on. She didn't know that her, that her meal was going to last that long. Never mind that when she's dead and gone, Elijah's dead and gone, Jesus is going to use her as a history lesson. <coughs> Chapter 7. Chapter 7. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 12. Now when it came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the deer, and they that bare him, and they that bared him stood still. And he said, "Young man, I say unto you, arise." And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and was delivered unto his mother. Look at that widow. Jesus, God, had compassion as when he says, "Hey, everyone, stop!" And he calls for the resurrection. Of this woman's son, who was the only thing she had, the only one she had, and then here's a here's a resurrection, here's a miracle for Israel to see 
of a widow woman in agony. And God had compassion. Acts. Acts. Seven. Verse eight. Now we're getting to the church age. Acts. Six. Excuse me. Acts six. One. In those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their riddles were neglected in the daily ministration. So, what comes to the fact is, at this time of the early church age, the widows were forsaken. They were not being taken care of. The food distribution was not happening to the widows, and people start complaining. And as you see, read a little bit later, then we get, we get men called deacons. The disciples call out men to take care of serving the tables, verse 2. And there are establishment for those men in verse 3. But the main cause of Acts chapter 6 verse 1, the early churches, the, the widows are not being taken care of and it raises a stir, comes right into the church age. you got to take care of your widows. You're not doing that. Hey, what are you doing? What's going on? So we can't see or say we're in the church age now to neglect them. Problem arises in verse 6. And the 12 disciples said, listen, we got to find some honest men. They've got to they take care of this office. They've got to feed and take care of the tables. And as we run that into 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, Seven, eight. Therefore, to the married and widows, it's good that for them to bite even as I. All right. Paul is suggesting in this verse here that he is either a single or b he's a widow. And he's like, okay, you know, <laughs> the best thing for you to do is not to marry. But if they cannot contain, oops, wait a minute, just lost my plane. If they cannot contain, let them marry for his better to marry than to burn, that's lust, passion. So, we look at now Paul, the church age, Corinthian church, saved individual. Paul says that widows are able to marry. And there is no restriction because, because, because there's no more high priest. So a widow can marry any Christian, not to be yoked with unbelievers, she can marry any Christian, according to Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles. So there is no restriction for a widow in the church age to remain a widow for the rest of her life. We'll see that in a moment even more. So. First Timothy. I believe that is. Five. 
3. Okay? Now, here's the rule. Church 8. Timothy is a minister. Paul's writing to Timothy. Here's the rule for elders in the church 8. Honor widows that are widows indeed. Uh-oh. What's wrong with that? There might have been widows. There might have been someone who called themselves a widow and they weren't a widow. There's always somebody trying to abuse the system. So the very first thing, Timothy, is when somebody comes up to you and says they're a widow, establish the fact is, pastor, deacons, that she is a widow. She's not faking it. But if any widow have children or nephews, let them first, let them, let them learn first to show pity at home and to requite their parents. For that is good and acceptable before God. All right, so here's a widow. She's got children. The church is not to take care of her, Acts chapter 6. You are to take care of your own parents. You are to take care of your mother. Listen, that's a law, I forget, in Japan or China. Isn't it funny? Isn't it funny that there is a law in a heathen, godless nation? Yet how many... Parents, widowers, are put into nursing homes that should not be in a nursing home. Listen, I know this medical condition that, that your parent can't be left alone. I understand those. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about they're just thrown into a nursing home and they're forgotten and their children are in church Sunday mornings. What's wrong with that? You have to take care of your parents. Or nephew would be the aunt. You take care of your aunt. Now, she that is a widow indeed and desolate. She's a widow. Husband's died. No one there to take care of her. Trusteth in God like Anna. Continues in supplications prayer night and day like Anna. Run back to Luke chapter 2. So there is a standard for the widows, for a church to take care of her. She's had no children, no nephews. She's to be a widow indeed, desolate. Her faith and trust is in God. She's in supplications and prayers night and day for the people of the church. Like Anna. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead, and while she liveth, you know, she's at the casino. She's on a cruise. She's enjoying her life. She's enjoying the pleasures of sin. Some churches today make it a pleasure and programs. These things get in charge. They may be blameless. But if any provide not for his own, talk about widows, especially of those of his own house, talking about widows, he has denied the face and worse than an infidel. You know, you, you know, if you don't provide for your own, you don't work or anything like that. Listen, the context is widows. Nothing else. Let not a widow be taken in the, not be taken into the number under three score years old. Sixty years old. All right? The minimum for a church to take care of a widow that's desolate, has no family, has nothing, is to be sixty years old. Having been the wife of one man. She hasn't been divorced, 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 divorced. And you can't be the wife of one man and be a widow. So you have to have been married. 
well reported of the good works. So she has good works, not to save her, but good works because she's saved. If she has brought up children, they may have died. They may have, you know, abused and left her and stranded her. Whatever reason. If she has large strangers, now I don't know if you're going to do that one today. But we're looking at the early church period. Listen, the churches, the houses of the people were the church meetings. They didn't have church buildings. And when people back then, when they traveled, they didn't have motels and hotels. They would lodge in the homes of the people. I wouldn't do that today. If she has washed the saints' feet, I don't know where you go with that one today. Foot washing is not an ordinance of the church. Well, you got foot washing here. It's not in the church. But if she has relieved the afflicted, she visits in the hospital. If she visits, you know, those who are sick at home. She, she relies comfort. She helps the family take care of the children while the mother is sick. She, she helps, watches the children while the mother goes out. Whatever it is, she's there to help the afflicted. She's not being afflicted by the government. She's not being afflicted by the church. She's helping those that are troubled. Or distress. So she's not being afflicted in trouble. She, and she's helping those who are. If she has diligently. Can't say that word. Followed every good work. For a church to take care of a widow. But the younger widows refuse. Under 60. For when they have begun to wax. Wanton against Christ. They will marry. You know, eventually, you know, a young widow would be like, you know, oh, there's that guy. And then they get married and the church is taking care of them and they shouldn't take care of them. Having damnation because they had cast off their first faith. You know, they were relying on the church. Now they're relying, oh. With all they learned to be idle, wandering from house to house. And, you know, and that's the young ones. For some have already turned aside after Satan. 15. He's in women who, who proclaim to be widows. They're young. Paul says, I would therefore, verse 14, younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary, the devil to speak reproach. So Paul's saying, as far as the widow, marry, remarry. Paul's saying, for a young woman, she's not, she's not. A widow, marry. Verse 16, if any man or woman that believe they have widows, let them retrieve them at home, relieve them at home. Relieve, there's that word again, relieve. Let not the church be charged. The only way a church is to be charged of the widows is what we just read. The qualification. Over 60 years old, got to be faithful in the thing. Got to make sure she's not living in pleasure. We, we read all that. If any may relieve them that are widows indeed. And listen, man or woman, your mother, may your father, they are widows. They're your parent. You're to take care of them. Not to, don't hand them over to the church. Don't hand them over to a nursing home. You take care of them. Again. China or Japan, one of them two nations, godless nations, has a law that you must take care of your parents. Not in the church. Not the church. James. James 1. 27. Pure religion undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fathers and the widows in their affliction. There's that affliction again. We have, we just read that the widows are to visit those in affliction, to help those in affliction in the church. You're not to afflict the widow in the law. And if somebody proclaims to be saved and proclaims to be anything of religion, 
You're to help the, the widows in the affliction. What's the affliction? Runs back to Acts chapter 6 and taking care of the widows. That's what it comes down to. Listen, it, it, it was never designed to be a, a retirement social security program. Security, Social Security Retirement Program of America made the churches. Ah, don't we know? We don't need to do that. Let let the government do it. The government can, and you sinned against God. 